said it before and will no doubt say it again, but never set off for a ride without a jacket in your back pocket. I personally used to train with one, in fact, with it in my pocket all year round, but then I was training in England and you never quite know exactly what's around the corner. But something lightweight like that will fold up really small and not take up much room in your pocket. You'll be glad of it if it starts raining or you're embarking on a long descent. And even if you get a mechanical and you're stuck at the side of the road, this will stop you getting too cold. Some people seem to be able to ride without eyewear the entire year round, but I personally always use it whenever that's possible. Not only does it keep all the bugs, dust and everything else out of your eyes, but over the winter months, I also found that my eyes would water if I had the cold air going into them. Now, to get through the bleak winter day, still being able to see, I'd simply put some clear lenses in, or something like this, which actually makes the day look brighter than it actually is. A novice cyclist, cold feet is a frequent complaint. They're the scourge of winter cycling. But the solution is really cheap and incredibly effective. Overshoes, either a neoprene or a wind and water resistant fabric that goes over your shoe and makes them instantly warmer. If you're someone that's got a limited budget so you can't afford to spend loads of money on each and every garment, well, we still recommend that you spend quite a bit on your base layer. This is, of course, a bit of material that's right next to your skin, so it plays a really important role in keeping you warm. These days, there's some great ones on the market that will keep you nice and snug, but the good ones will also help wick away moisture from your skin, so if you sweat, you won't get cold. Now, this is particularly apt, of course, for Psy, and on that note, steer clear of pink base layers. There's nothing more annoying in winter than being all nicely wrapped up, but then there being a gap somewhere in your clothing that lets a load of cold air in. Now, cycling kits should always have longer arms and back to combat this, but if you're gonna buy some new stuff, then when you try it on, don't just stand there. Make sure that you get on a bike and get into your riding position to make sure, particularly, that the arms are long enough. Now, with this in mind, I always used to choose gloves as well that had quite a long wrist on them so that you ended up with a really nice snug closure on that. And with this in mind as well, also think about your bib tights. That way it stops any drafts going up your back as opposed to just having standard tights on. Now, one of the first things which people find hard to keep warm on winter rides are their extremities, so their hands and their feet. So the temptation can be to layer up, and if you do it right, it can be good. But avoid the temptation to have your shoes too tight by having layers underneath them. The best thing to do if you're going to layer on your feet is to do it on the outside of the shoe, and first of all, make sure that the shoe is not actually too tight in the first place. So if your feet get really cold, find a thin pair of overshoes to start with, and see if you can get another thicker pair over the top. And exactly the same thing with your hands, Try and find a thinner pair of gloves which don't clamp down too much on your hands and fingers and then put a bigger pair over the top. As well as worse weather conditions, riding in winter also means you have to put up with lower light levels. So it's worth thinking about visibility when it comes to your cycling wardrobe. Now, fluoro is fortunately cool at the moment, which means that you'll be able to stand out an awful lot more. And also have to think about reflective panels as well that you really show up when a car comes past with its headlights on. Now, along with your hands and your feet, you also want to make sure that you keep your head warm. If it's not too cold, well, then a simple traditional cap like this one here will suffice. However, once those temperatures do start to plummet, you want to try and cover your ears as well. You can use just a simple headband, but I personally used to like a skull cap such as this one. Went right the way over my head kept it nice and warm. Now, actually one of the modern inventions, aerodynamic helmets that you see the pro riders using in races these days, serve more than one purpose. Yes, they'll make you faster in races, but also I found that they're absolutely brilliant in the winter months because of course they keep all of the wind and the rain off your head. You almost don't even need the skull cap unless it's really, really cold. And actually this cask infinity is really, really perfect because if you do start to overheat, you can simply open the vent. 
The invention of the windstopper fabric many years ago was an absolute godsend for us cyclists. All of a sudden we had a nice lightweight material which we could use in the winter which would genuinely keep us warm. In fact these days we pretty much just need a good quality base layer with a nice jacket on top of it and that will keep us nice and toasty even when it's getting down towards freezing point. And that windstopper material is not just for your jackets. You can also use it on overshoes. Gloves were an absolute essential for me during the winter months. You can even get it on headbands these days as well. And finally, manufacturers are getting the hang of using it also down here on the tights. Previously, it was quite hard for them to do because you'd lose some of the shape and the elasticity, but now they're just putting the windstopper material in the right places to keep you nice and warm. Over the cold winter months, the temptation can be to overdress so that you're nice and toasty and warm as soon as you leave your house. But don't do it. Ten minutes into your eye, once your body's started working, you'll be frantically unzipping everything that you can. So you want to aim to be slightly cold when you set out on your ride in the first few minutes. That means when you warm up, you'll actually be the right temperature for the majority of your ride. Now a bit depends on how hard you're riding though. Ride steadily and you'll need more layers. Ride harder and you'll need less. Dan, I'm absolutely freezing, yeah, mate. We're going to have to ride hard. Shivering with nuts off. Can't even clip in, oh. I'm so cold. Oh. 